Isabel Jean Delgado is a Filipino author known for her fictional stories and poetry. She won the 32nd Manila Critic Circle and Philippines National Book Award for Best Book of Short Fiction in English with her first book, After the Body Displaces Water, published by University of Santo Tomas Publishing House on 2012, and it was a Madrigal Gonzalez First Book Award finalist in 2013. In 2010, she received a Philippines Free Press Award for her literature for the short story category. She enjoys reading since the novels she read as a child influenced what she wanted to be. She revealed in an interview with the National Book Development Board that she once wished to be a dog, and it was because of a book she read as a child. She graduated from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, with a bachelor's degree in journalism and a master's degree in comparative literature. She was a university lecturer at the University of the Philippines and Miriam College, among others. She is currently the manager of Verite Southeast Asia's Research and Stakeholder Engagement Program, a labor-focused NGO, in addition to being a fictional author and university lecturer. At Verite, she is in charge of planning, implementing, and managing multi-country programs. She is an RICA, RAISE or RAISE, and EICC accredited lead auditor, as well as one of the directors of the Fair Hiring Initiative Incorporated, a Philippines registered nonprofit organization. Having been born and raised in Tacloban City, she considers the city as her home. She now officially resides in Quezon City with her husband, William. This literary piece unfolds the story of a little girl named Chen and her experiences at her relative's place with her mother's absence. Chen told a story when her mother left her at Tacloban City Leite, where her tios and tias live. Without knowing the reason why her mama has left her there, it all became a puzzle for her as she started to ask more questions and add more curiosities to herself. In Tacloban, she met her tias and tias and her cousin Danny. With Danny's help, Jen found out that her relatives are somewhat connected with the Marcoses. On the other hand, Jen was being called as Indai by her tias and tias, and they are the one who takes care of her when her mom is not coming home. While in Tacloban, she started to observe every little thing that was near to her, ask questions about it, particularly the traditions her relatives do. Even her first day of menstruation became a big step for Jen to figure things out. Waking up, Jen saw her relatives watching the television where people are hugging and dancing all together to celebrate the success of People Power Revolution against the dictators. She suddenly missed her mom and innocently thought they could be one of those people enjoying it. Together with the downfall of conjugal dictatorship also was the start of Jen's tias and tias' businesses to close down. Jen suddenly come to her realizations that her entire family is related to what's happening in their society and a realization that up until now, her mother is still nowhere to be found. Every lie I tell about my mother is but an attempt to save her. For the methodology section of the paper, We've gathered three literary approaches, namely the author-dependent approach, text-dependent approach, and reader-dependent approach, to which we've also included three of its subtypes, which are the historical bibliographical approach, moral philosophical approach, and the constructionism. Firstly, we have the subtype historical bibliographical under the author-dependent approach. Being one of the most complementary subjects that underlie any form of art, history and biography is being tackled in the literary piece as it both coexists in a story of a little girl living in presumably the most insufferable presidential regime in the Philippines. It depicts what a usual day would look like for the people traditionally. 
And in terms of history, the literary piece brought a new imaginative state of what it really felt like being an ordinary person in the Marcos regime. For the second part of the methodology, we have the second subtype, which is the moral philosophical approach. In terms of applying morality and philosophy to a literary piece, it is always important to go in-depth about how one's experiences, ideas, and dialogue affect their lives and, of course, their work as an artist or just an ordinary individual. In this subtype theory, we will unravel how much of an effect two societal issues truly have on a character's morals and philosophy in life. By examining the text, the constructionism shows that the text have irreconcilable meanings rather than being a unifying. The constructionism is a disruptive border between binary opposition and to do so in such a manner that the hierarchy suggested by the oppositions is brought into a question. And by that, we will examine the structure of this narrative to observe how texts of finance by Daryl Delgado unravel as they make reference to themselves. In reading a story, it emphasizes our role as a reader, considering that reading process is a transaction between us and the text in which we interact with it based on our past experience, beliefs, expectations, and assumptions. And by using this method, we will discuss what the author's writing indicates and use our understanding to this text to explain our own responses. Some people do believe that literature reflects the author's life because one of the functions of literature is to mirror one's own story. According to this literary piece by Daryl Delgado, the protagonist lived in Quezon City with her mother before being sent to Tacloban City. Meanwhile, Daryl, the penance author, was born and raised in Tacloban, but now resides in Quezon City, indicating a connection between the author and the protagonist. Assuming that Jen and Daryl are the same exact person, we can tell that the author experiences the said struggle in the story during the Marcos era. With that, we may conclude that she composed this narrative to convey her experiences as a daughter who was abandoned by her own mother, as a relative of a Marcos apologist, and of course, as a child during those times. The author focuses on the traditional activity of penitentia, or the desire to be forgiven of our sins in the first chapter of the story. Her uncle pays Christopher to the penitential for their family. And since her entire clan is a Marco supporter, we assume the author was attempting to portray the concept of a Marcos willing to spend money merely to have someone else pay for his crime. And it is clear from that how she wants us to be aware of the system at that time. For the moral philosophical approach in our criticism, this criticism really focused on the deeper meaning of the context in regards of morality, values, and behavior. The story of penance discusses various lessons and teachings that throughout the story is mentioned and is actually symbolizing real-life scenarios and behaviors. The character of Jen in the story undergone major changes in her life wherein she developed a change in herself as well. Change of environment, absence of her mom, and the coming of age stage. Jen went to drastic measures in figuring out her life way back then as a Trevor's old girl. With this in mind, it really affected her growth as a person and also developed some setbacks in herself like lack of trust and earning abandonment issues because of her missing out mom. Opening up her mind and her surroundings during the time of the Marcuses let her really see what reality is all about, cruelty and ignorance. Politics in the story had its way to manipulate morals seen in the context as a reflection of the impact of politics in the reality we live in. Now moving forward with the text-dependent approach, 
we will be using the destructionalism approach on application. The deconstruction criticism breaks down the text itself to bring out the deeper and contradicting meaning and ideas between the lines. Jen's perspective around her in the time of martial law and other major events in Philippine history paved the way of alteration in her life. Contradicting points in the story like the reason behind them transferring to Taploban really was unclear and created different possible reasons while reading the context. The portraits of the Marcuses on the walls of Tio Julio's home had also triggered different possible meanings behind it as the power of Marcuses in the country at the time was a big deal. The sudden disappearance of Les and Les's mom, Jen's first menstruation, and the absence of Jen's mom are points in the story that really started a conversation of contradiction in the minds of the readers as anything is possible at the time like those. Just like Jen's imagination, we could not stop ourselves to ponder or dive into speculations also within the context itself. As what Samuel Johnson stated, the writer only begins a book, a reader finish it. Simply implies that the reader has its own perspective from the book itself. And now, we are going to tell the understanding that we take from this story. The first is how a child loves her mother, knowing that even after she was left with her relatives, she still seeks comfort from her mother almost every day. Despite the fact that she was clearly ignored, she explored undesirable behavior such as smoking, drinking alcohol, and interfering with other people's lives. Nonetheless, until the end of the story, when she reaches a turn pointing of her life, her mother is absence once more but we can see that she's still hoping she's still hoping to get her mama back i feel something trickle down my tight i look down to see brownish red streaks mark my pale skin i am unable to breathe properly i am being smothered by a thick dark heavy blanket i keep bleeding and bleeding in the background, the tears keep wheeling, and my mother is still nowhere to be found. We interpret that last sentence as thought Jen represent the Filipinos, who were then bleeding as a result of Marcos' downfall. Not because we need a president like him to become a well-developed country, but because of his legacy, a failure that have harmed us until now.